Good morning, everybody. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. We are live streaming today. Hello, Dean. How are you doing? We're going to get started here. This week, I was working and uh, helping some students out, and I've been doing live streams basically on songs that I've been working on lately and trying to tie them into things that I believe that you will be interested in. And so uh, one of my supporters was wondering if we could do Take Me Out to the Ball Game, if she could have a version of finger picking so that she could actually play it. And the one I have on my website, let me pull it up here so I can read it. There it is. It's in the key of C, and so it starts out like this. So it's in the key of C. It's actually a good key for me to sing in. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. Do you know the song? If you're not from the United States <laughs> and you don't know about baseball, because I do know some people that were like, what's baseball? Baseball has been around for 100 years. And this song was actually written in 1908 by Jack Norworth and Albert von Tilts Tilzer. And they had never been to a baseball game before they wrote this song. And uh, it didn't really become part of the American culture for another bunch of years. Uh, I think it was in the 30s that it really, really took off. <coughs> but they sing it at uh, baseball games. Let's see. Um, let's see. Let's start again. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one. And then there's a diminished chord. Two. Let's see, what's my chord? Let's see, what, what's my chord there? For it's one, two. Three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. So I was starting to work on this song. And that's not a very good place for finger picking. I mean, it's, it's an okay place. Oops. But it's kind of low in the guitar. So I tried this one. And that's kind of high because it goes all the way up to the eighth fret. It would be nice if it was down in this area for a lot of people because, uh, you know, like when we're doing a song. Especially if you're not super advanced, it's nice to have it kind of down there and you can do open position chords and that kind of thing. So that's what I was kind of aiming for. Open position chords, the melody in a place where we could do it. And I thought, well, what if we do it up here? What if we play this? Well, what would that, that would be a C. So what's a C chord on that? And I thought, well, let's see. If I put the capo on the fifth fret, I'm going to check my tuning really fast here. We got my unitune. Just want to make sure it's not too far out of tune. So I can play a G chord with a capo on the fifth fret. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. And that gives me open position chords. And it also uh, makes it possible that I can play the melody. Right? 
with open position chords, and it all sits right there in that one spot because that's a that's a major scale, right? I'm starting on the G string, fifth fret, playing five seven. Then I'm going to the B string, five six eight, five seven eight, and that's our major scale right there. I'm going to keep that tuner on because uh, I might need to retune my guitar. So I started messing around with that. Now I'm not playing a C chord in the sense that it looks like this, right? But now it's a G chord. It looks like a G chord, but if I get on the piano, it's actually a C chord. That note right there is a C on the E string. So this chord becomes a C chord, even though it looks like a G chord. So a lot of times what happens on a sheet like this, we might say, you know, you're going to play a G chord with a capo on the fifth fret. So what I did was I wrote out a, let's see here, let me pick this up. Maybe I'll put it over on this screen. Let me move it. All right, I'm just going to play through the melody. It's going to start on the G string open. By the way, this melody is available to my supporters over at Patreon and at Subscribestar and the people on my email list. It's also going to be in my book really soon. reading the tab. Now I'm, I haven't actually released this particular tab. It's just a tab of the melody and that's all it is. You could also take the capo off and play it open. Wait, what's my note? Like that. Let me go back to my page right here and see if there's any comments. Where are you other three watchers from? Oh, oh, I see. Give me a thumbs up, guys. Yes, Dean wants to know where other people are, where you're from. So if you're, uh, if you're here and you're watching, say something in the comments. I know Bob is busy right now. He is not able to be with us in the chat, unless he can do it on his phone. But uh, glad to have you all here. So we're working on Take Me Out to the Ball Game. It's an American tune. And we're talking about how I got this melody, for those of you who are just showing up. <coughs> and this is, has something to do with uh, helping you to understand how to play fingerstyle guitar, how to play intros to songs. Okay, you've got to know your chords. So this particular song, uh, let's see, I'm just going to leave the capo off. <clears throat> so I just played the melody for that. So my, I decided, Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. It's a little low for my voice. So if I was going to sing it, I'd probably raise it up because take. I can sing that note, but it's really low for me. It's not really a, it's more like a breath. So I might raise it up to here. Take me out to the ball game. See, that would be an A. Let's raise it up to. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Mm, I want to go a little higher. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. See, the nice thing about having a song where you can actually put a capo on is you can tailor it to your voice, whatever you want to do. <coughs> so I'm using a G chord to a D chord. I'm using an E chord. Buy me some peanuts and A minor. Cracker Jack. A. I don't care if I. D. Never get back. 
let me root, root, root for the G, back to D, home team, if they don't, does a G7, when it's a shame, C, poor, it's one, C sharp diminished, wait, 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 what's my chord, one, C sharp diminished, two, G, three strikes you're out, E or E7, at the old A, ball, G, game, G. <clears throat> Did I say G? D, G. So those last four chords, E, A, D, G, all major chords. GFG says, hi folks, Trinidad and Tobago, here, that's in the Caribbean, for those who may be wondering. Very good, welcome. I'm so glad you're coming to us from the Caribbean. That's fantastic. Do you say Caribbean or Caribbean? I'm just wondering. I'm not from there, so I don't know how you say it. I've heard it said both ways. So now let's go back to what I was talking about. Um, let's go ahead and take the capo off again, and I'm going to show you the melody with the chords. So you got to know your melody. have to know your chords. Right? And then we go to the E chord. Now I thought that that was a little bit hard to do. Now I could do that. I could play my E chord. Or you could do it like this. You could play, let's see, what would that be? I'm going to take my... Could do it that way. And then A minor. A chord. Now it's going to go all the way up to the A note right there. But my D, no D chord is down here. I need to have a D no uh, an A note with that D chord so I could play it here. That's what I opted to do. So this is like a bar chord with the uh, A string, excuse me, with the A note on the E string, fifth fret. So I decided to do that. Back to, sorry. C chord. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to play a C chord like this or like this. This is easier. Instead of doing the bar chord, because I'm only going to play the C note on the third fret here, and then C note there, E note there, the G note there, and then the same chord but now it's a, I mean, same note, but it's going to be a C-sharp diminished chord. And that's a C-sharp diminished right there. C-sharp sharp diminished, I'll call it out for you. A string, fourth fret. D string, let's see if I act, no, I'm not doing that. A string, fourth fret. D string, fifth fret. G string, third fret. B string, fifth fret. E string, third fret and then to back to G chord E chord I'm going to do it this way let's see it's an E7 actually that's the seventh of the chord I'm just playing the open E first fret on the G string that's a G sharp and then the D right there and then we're going to A, D chord, G chord. And that makes it really good. Now, if you need it, if you want to sing it, and you need it in a different key, use a capo. Put it up there. Wherever it is, right? See that? So that's where you can do it. What does this have to do with 
the relevance of you playing a melody and everything like that. Well, let's say you're going to play Here Comes the Sun. I did this lead sheet, put it in my book, and this is the melody. Now that's not where George Harrison plays it. He actually plays it with a capo on the seventh fret. Let's put a capo on the seventh fret and do that. Oh, just gotta adjust it just right so it's not too hard. I'm gonna check my tuning. That's a little sharp. There we go. Sometimes if you're just a little bit sharp with a capo on, just pull the string and it'll pull it through like that. Works really good. What am I hearing? Oh. I think that's the washer. There's the melody to Here Comes the Sun. So what happens here is that we have these chords. G, bum, 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 A7. Dun, 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 G. Dun, 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 A7. It seems like a really simple song, right? But I have so many students that have trouble doing this. Right? It's because... I think they're just unfamiliar with that melody for one thing, so I wrote it out. It's pretty simple. It's just right there on the B string and on the E string, and you can do this. A7, D, G, a7. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good. It's just, it's not very far away from. Right, from what George does. So, this is the same idea. You learn a melody, you learn your chords, you mix them together, and this is how you do it. This is a fantastic thing to do. And that's how it works. Well, let's see here. So we've talked about a couple of different songs. Take Me Out to the Ball Game, Here Comes the Sun, and melody and how it works with the chords. You can do this with any song. You can do the same thing with classical pieces that go like this. Let's see, how's that go? Right, and this is a... Nice little classical piece by Francisco Tarrega. Only here, what's happening is that these pieces of chords don't look like open position chords, right? Double stops. B7. Oops, I'm kind of messing up a little bit. It's hard to play and talk at the same time. Then it's all the way up here. Looks like an A minor chord on the uh, 10th and 11th fret. It looks like an A7 chord. It's way up there. That's actually a B7 going to a E. Right? So these chords are very valuable. Learning your chords, learning your open position chords first. E, A, E minor, A minor, E minor 7, A minor 7, excuse me. Uh, D, D minor, G, C, all of those chords. Let's see, what else did I 
did I miss? B7, F, this F. Okay, all of those open position chords are very, very, very important. Dean asks, after a couple of umbrella drinks, I, can t I can't tell the difference in pronunciation. <laughs> He's talking about the word Caribbean or Caribbean. Another question Dean asks. Actually, that was a comment by, by Dean. What's the quickest, easiest way to transition from playing tab with my index finger? Are you talking about like this, Dean? You know, just playing with your index finger? Is that what you're talking about? To full picking, like this? Like. Or. Like that? Is that what? Yes, that's what he's talking about. He just answered me. Um, well, <laughs> I, I have videos on this. That's It's called Finger Picking 101. Finger Picking 101. Look it up. Put in your in your bar at the top, and your on your phone. Do a search. Finger picking 101, Halstead or Quail Studios. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> Dean says, "You know, I'm giving you an example, Dean, of full finger picking. That's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to show off. I'm just showing you what that full finger picking is. Yes, Dean and I are friends." And yes, uh, Finger Picking 101 talks about um, actually taking a chord, like a C chord, a G chord. Uh, you can do it with an A minor chord, E minor, E, the open position chords. But really, um, what happens is that we have to learn how our hand position it's really important to, to know the hand position, what kind of position you have it in. If you have your wrist too close, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to do that. There are times like that when we use a very closed hand position, I mean a wrist, low wrist, right, when we're doing that kind of thing. But to be able to use all of your fingers, you have to teach them what to do. You can't just follow the easy way and just use one finger the whole time. I have students that play with one finger, you know. Right? And just, like, they use one finger, either their index finger, their first finger, or their second finger. Uh, just to let you know, I call this my first, second, third, fourth fingers, index, middle, ring, pinky. So... And the reason is because on the right hand, we use index, middle, ring, pinky. Left hand, we use one, two, three, four. And thumb on the right hand. So what you do is you have to teach your fingers what to do, and you have to do it slowly. I did this over a period of a couple of months. <laughs> GFJ says, I'm inspired by the showing off. Don't stop. Well, I'm not really trying to show off, but I'm just showing you some examples, right, of uh, how to do this kind of thing. So what you do is you take your C chord, and then you go very slowly. I'm going to kind of point, if you can look at my hand right there, I'm, I'm looking over at my view of the camera and making sure that I'm in there. I'm going to move the camera down so you can see me better. Here, let's... Uh and you can see this on my other video, too. You can see that my hand is in kind of a, the wrist is a, in a little bit of an up position. I'm playing a C chord here, just a regular C chord. Hope you're not getting dizzy. And I talk about in that video exactly what you need to do. I talk about three different things, set, pluck, release. Set, pluck, release, pluck, release, pluck, relax. I guess you could call it a pluck release or a pluck relax. You can also do that with all your fingers. You can set them down all together and then 
release them and then set them again. Now, when I did that uh, song a little while ago, I was playing uh, more than words. Let's see, I'm just going to get this so my camera is. Like that. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting everything down. And then you go down and you pluck that, or you hit that. Joseph Glasso says, House of the Rising Sun, good beginner song to practice arpeggio and finger picking, assigning fingers to strings, thumb, index, middle, ring. Yes, I agree with you, Joseph. Let's see. Let's see, how's that go? A minor, C. I'm doing it different ways here. I'm just trying to remember the chords. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing, this is House of the Rising Sun. A minor. C. So what I'm using, I'm using my thumb on the A string, going to the D string with my thumb, not using my pinky at this time. And then let's see, it's a D. Right there, since I only have four strings I'm working with, I'm going D, D string again, and then F. Same thing here, I'm just using that small chord, small F. Or you could use all five of your fingers. Now I'm using my ring, excuse me, thumb, index, middle. Now when I get to the D chord, I don't have five strings, I'm only using four strings. Same thing with the F chord. chord or if I use use my thumb twice yes a minor C D F E I got it thank you Joseph I appreciate your help and we did figure it out didn't we there are many songs that you can use for that. Uh, there's also on my website, I don't know if you know my website, it's called quailstudios.com, quail-studios, plural, dot com, q-u-a-i-l-s-t-u-d-i-o-s dot com, and uh, in that you can go to, there's one tab that says music, you hover over that, it goes down, you go down to the guitar book, you click on that, ding, and it takes you to something I call the guitar book. Also, under music, let's see, under lessons, if you go to, uh, let's see, was it music? Oh, yeah, finger picking study pieces under music. Go to finger picking study pieces and you click on that. There's something called Andantino for two guitars, Andantino for one guitar, Lagrima, Francisco Tarrega. This one, a little more advanced. Study number one by Francisco Tarrega. There's also Giuliani 120 plus. These are uh, studies. Uh, Christopher Davis kind of put these together and he let me use that, have permission. And you go to page uh, 14 and you start with something like this on the C chord. And then you go to, oops. Wrong chord. I haven't done this for a while. Okay, 
those are studies and they, they have like 120 studies and uh, I actually have s videos on these studies um, I started doing uh, study number one number two number two B three three B and that's as far as I got and you'll find that under a playlist called uh, I think it's finger picking studies by Giuliani or something like that let's see what else uh, hello Lisa welcome Yes, Joseph, thank you very much. Well, thank you for being here. You know what? I'm going to go. It's been uh, a half an hour since we've been here, approximately. And uh, some people were late coming on, but that's fine. You can go back and watch the, uh, the replay of this. You can just get out and come back in. Dean asks, how can you demonstrate arpeggio? If not, can you at least pronounce it? <laughs> Lisa says, I'm late today. Yes, you are. That's OK. Not a problem. An arpeggio basically is what we were talking about. When we were talking about House of the Rising Sun, that's an arpeggio because it's a chord that is being played. That's an arpeggio. Or it could be... That's an arpeggio. So it can go one direction, it can go the other way. It's when you play a chord one note at a time. So we call it arpeggiating the chord. That's what we do. So that's what arpeggio is. All right. Um, are there any other questions? Because I'm, I'm going to hang around just for another minute or so. And uh, you have time to type in your questions. There's a little bit of delay. You're welcome, Dean. There's a little bit of, he says, thanks. There's a little bit of a delay by the time I call for, you know, answers or, or questions or whatever, and by the time someone says, oh, oh, let me, uh, let me write this in. Right? I'm not going to touch my keyboard because I might mess up the, the live stream. Uh, GFJ says, thanks, Hal. Appreciate it. Gives me a thumbs up. Thank you very much, GFJ. Appreciate you. From Caribbean, from the Caribbean, from Trin Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, we get people from all over, from Indonesia, from uh, South Africa. We've had people here from all over, from uh, Ireland. I don't see anybody from Ireland here today, but they they might be here. They'll be here later, and you can leave me a comment in the in the description mm -hmm. uh, underneath. I look at all the comments, at least I try to. And if you say something important or ask me a question, I try to get back to you. If you have a question and you're trying to get in touch with me, get in touch with me at Lessons with Hal, L-E-S-S-O-N-S-W-I-T-H-H-A-L at gmail.com. I, I get in touch with, you know, if you get in touch with me, I will answer you back. Even if it's just a one word answer like yes, or uh, actually I usually do more than that. But I answer all my emails and I try to look at all my comments that come in, but uh, that's a big job. I have uh, 90, how many thousand <laughs> people on my channel now, and so I can't answer everybody, but try to. All right. Thank you very much for being here. I don't see any of the questions coming in. We'll talk to you later, and uh, have a good day. I'm going to, let's see. Oh, that's not working, is it? I wonder if this works. Nope. I thought I had maybe a chord in there, but there's no chord in there. I was going to play a chord as I go out. Okay, see you later. Just an improvisation. See you later, Lisa. Bye-bye.